Now for the RGB out. I'm putting this off because I'm lazy. I have, so I'm just going to use a GBS 8200 board um, to get the VGA out. Uh, this is one I made up for Amstrad, CPC and um, BBC, Model B. Um, so use the same RGB uh, output. And I'm pretty sure it came with one of these, one of these connectors. So that, otherwise I don't know where I got that from. Um, <clears throat> And then what I've done for the Amstrad as well is because it takes five volts, run this idea is run this off six volts. Then there's um, just a diode here, you know, drop it down 0.7 volts. So it's just over five volts. So you can also, the idea is you also power the Amstrad from this. Anyway, so of course this connector here on the bite is seven pin and it's different to the pin out. Even though you don't, even though you're only using five pins still, it's a um, different order. So, um, do I make a converter from that to that? whatever? So, I'm gonna put that aside. I do have a second, a second GVS 8200. <sighs> no idea where that connector is, um, but this side here also is perfect. It's um. Blue, green, red, ground, and composite sink. Perfect. But could I get a connector for that? No. Not at the local shop anyway. Um, the closest I could get is six pin, but it doesn't fit properly. So my grand idea was to just basically really solder that on somehow somehow solder that on pull out this pin in there and then i could connect this up to my cable i'm making but oh no sort that can't be bothered with that either so so this is the cable i've made so far uh just a five pin um goes in there of course unfortunately i don't have all the right colored cables uh, and I can't, re <laughs> I can't remember what I've done to it. So I just need to buzz this out first. And then I'm just going to just solder it directly on just to see if this thing works. Um, so, yeah, let me just get these tinned up and I'll figure out what's what. And then solder them on and let's see. Okay, the deed is done. Um, let's see. <laughs> let's see if this works. They just tidy up. Well, oh, something. <laughs> I just had to let it sit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Maybe there's an issue with the sink. Maybe the pinout's totally wrong. Maybe the pinout in the bloody manual is wrong. I did read something online. The two things that I found. Oh, the Spanish article. I translated that into English. It said something there was errata um, documented in, in the documentation. So I've scanned it in and I've printed it out. So that is, that there is apparently the pinout. Which I have followed. I have followed the, the pinout. But there are these diagrams here. I zoom out. But, you know, there's reference to 12 volts. It's like, well, there's no 12 volts in here. Oops, sorry. So, video ground, green, blue, red. See, up here we're talking about plus 12 volts. So, well, where the hell is that coming from? The power supply only outputs five, apparently. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if there's reference to... So, maybe I need to look at this. 
But it was a reference to a, a KR1021. And I have a KR103. So that's a ROM. That's a different so that's a different ROM as well. So maybe that's uh, the first model of this machine. See so again here. So we've got reference to the RGB output, and then we've got bloody 12 volts here. And the switch is like, well, where's this 12 volts coming from? I don't see any DC DC converter on the board. Um, and the power supply definitely says it's 5 volts. It doesn't say 5 volts and 12 volts. Um, unless it does also output 12 volts and there's 12 volts missing. Hmm. All right. All right, we're going to continue work, figuring this out. Got the analyzer hooked up. Power on. So pretty much it looks like bus request stays high. Read we're seeing activity on. Uh, write is high, although we did see some activity at the start. And memory requests. So the... Um, UB880D is doing something. Let's uh, check a few more signals. But yeah, nothing uh, nothing on the display. That well, could be dodgy cabling. <laughs> Alright. Okay, continuing. So I've got um, D0 through to D7. So all 8 bits of the data line hooked up. Okay. So it looks like pretty much, looks like there is something happening. <laughs> that seems to be working at least. It is reading data. So ROM or RAM, I don't know, because we've got the, we've got the ROM under there. And then we've got 64 kilobytes of RAM here, which, well, it's been known to fail in, in Western computers very frequently. Um, so, you know, one bit each there. But, you know, we, see, we seem to be getting data. I assume it's coming from RAM and ROM. So that seems to be working. So maybe it's just my very dodgy cable. Maybe I need to look at the, it's either that or maybe the Because there was some garbage coming up before. It's definitely doing something. Okay, so I've got I've got D0 to D7 hooked up plus the clock. And I've activated a simple parallel analyzer. So I assume that'll take um, the eight bits and generate a um, a hex value for that um, uh, in sync with the clock so I start power on and then stop oh, I can look at it <laughs> scrolling through so it does look like it it was doing something initially and then it's just kind of, it looks like it's got itself into a repetitive pattern here, especially with D5. It seems to be quite repetitive. So I guess maybe one thing I can do is because the Z80 is supposed to start when you first power it on, it starts executing from uh, address zero. So I could, I could check the address as well, address, um, the address lines. I'll just try and find the start, jeez, a lot of data. So you can see down here, let me go mobile. For a Mac Mini, <laughs> Mac, 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 Mac Mini server actually. 2000, 2012, what is it? Oof. Oh, 26% CPU. Oh, anyway, what is it doing? So, we can see, so I get, I'm, I'm assuming this should be, hopefully, correctly decoded bytes. Um, 
So maybe I can try and search for some of these in the firmware to see if it is actually executing from ROM. Um, see, there's a bit of bit of difference there. When you look back at see, it seems right at the start. It seems it was doing something. Well, there we go. 2012, 16, 16 gig of anyway. Seems to be doing something there. Especially with, um, oh, I'm just trying to get D0 in there as well. See, I don't know, see, D5 always seems to be, um, unless, there's, unless there's a problem with, say, the, the bit 5 on the RAM. One of these. Unless that could be an issue. Okay, good old logic is still still processing it. 38% available to search. So, <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of FD and FFs. FDFFF. FD. So yeah, I'm so it's it's doing something. It's doing something. It's not doing what it should be doing. Um so you can see down here. FF 20, FF 20, FD 20, FD, FF 76, FF. I'm not, yeah. They don't really seem to be valid instructions, to be honest. I don't know the Z80. Um, a lot of FD 20, FD 20, FD 20, 7F, FD 20. Oh, so I don't know if this is a. Log goose chase, red herring. I'm looking at the wrong thing, but so that's that's the data that the Z80 is doing, and yeah, um, where is the ah, zooming out? Let me zoom all the way in. Hmm, I'm going to have to, so unfortunately, see that, okay, so this, okay, this looks valid, okay, 96, 8, AD, A0, 95, B5, 9F, B, B5, 8D, AD, so this actually seems to be doing something at the start, and, you know, we get, all the data lines seem to be doing well, okay, <laughs> these ones are all doing the, okay, same thing, but, okay, mate, um, they're the high bits, so maybe they're all zeros, okay, yeah, they're all zeros, so, they're all, yeah, okay. So it seems to be doing something at the start. Okay, well, zero, so they're knobs, aren't they? Not, not. <laughs> Alright, I might get the Z80 ch uh, uh, chart out. And then, so, you know, there's, there's a bit of activity, it seems. So we're reading from ROM, maybe. And then, after a while... After a while, we're just doing the same stuff. Over and over. D5's doing the same stuff. Hmm. Unless that's it, it's booted, and now the screen's sitting there waiting for me, and the blink, and the cursor's blinking, and it's just my dodgy cable. <laughs> oh, useless at this. All right, let me check the cable. Maybe I don't want to, I don't want these things to be too long, so maybe I'll just cut it here for now, and then take, continue tomorrow. Maybe, yeah, might do that. I think that'll be it for tonight. Uh, I need to have a think about this. Um, mm. So could it be a ROM? Could it be one or more of these DRAM chips? Uh, da, 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 da. So I need to check the pinouts of these and also just double check 
Because as I said, in the manual there is reference to plus 12 volts. And there are three pins on the power, on the original power supply. Uh, but then again also, where does it say the pinouts? Where was I looking at pinouts? Pinouts are here. And definitely only says plus five volts and ground. And I followed this. I followed that's the that's the video output. Uh, da, da, da. This is working, although well, I guess I could connect up to the Amstrad. Hmm. So I will continue the troubleshooting tomorrow. I need to have a think about this.